So let's talk a little bit about the activities that you need to become a competitive medical school applicant. As you can see, I outlined the five that most commonly are seen on medical school applications. So let's start by breaking it down. So first one, clinical exposure. So clinical exposure is some type of experience where you're working alongside physicians, nurses, hospital staff, clinic staff, and hopefully getting some patient experience and interaction. That's a pretty important part of clinical exposure. This can be volunteering in the hospital, this could be volunteering in a clinic, or working in a nursing home, or things like that. The most common question that we get in regards to activities is how many hours? So for these first three, let's use the greater than 200 hour rules. So. For clinical exposure, you want to shoot for at least 200 hours of spending time in the hospital or a clinic, working alongside physicians, nurses, as I said, and making sure that you can understand and experience the dynamic of healthcare in some degree. Next, research. So research is a very important aspect of your application. Medical schools want to see that you have developed a project and that you made a hypothesis and explored the hypothesis. The best research projects are longitudinal and have had some kind of production of results. So that could either be a poster presentation or if you really want to put some icing on the cake, then a publication looks awesome. So same thing here for research, at least 200 hours. And usually that's pretty easy to accomplish if you're working on a project that's long term and maybe you've spent at least some time um, over one or two years in undergrad doing it. Community service. Again, we're going to use that 200 hour mark. 200 hours for community service. Community service is volunteer work where you are giving your time without getting something in return. So let's say you volunteer at a hospital. Does that count? Not really, because in volunteering for a hospital, you're getting something back for that. You are getting that experience of volunteering in a hospital. Whereas with community service, medical schools want to see your altruistic nature, meaning you taking the time to give back without necessarily getting something in return. So that could be working in a homeless shelter, volunteering in a, as a community tutor, volunteering with the YMCA, big brothers, big sisters, any type of event does not necessarily have to be medically related. But again, this should be something that you develop and work on over a long period of time. Shadowing. So now we break away from that 200 rule. Shadowing, and that's going to be physician shadowing, and ideally this should be a U.S. medical physician. You can do some shadowing international, and that works great, or it looks great, but you should also have some shadowing in the U.S. as well. For shadowing, I usually recommend somewhere greater than 50 hours of shadowing, and try to shadow as many different physicians in as many specialties as possible. So for instance, if you can only shadow a primary care physician for 50 hours, that's okay. But if you could shadow a primary care physician for 10, a surgeon for 10, an obstetrician for 10, pediatrician for 10, so on and so forth, that's gonna look really good. Because in that case, you've really exposed yourself to different specialties, to a wider breadth of medicine, and also expose yourself to how different physicians actually work and practice. Lastly, leadership activities. Leadership activities can be in any one of these other activities, or you could be a leader in a hobby or a different activity. So this does not have to be completely separate. Also, I don't think the hours are as important here. You really want instead to focus on how many leadership activities do you have? And most of the time that's gonna be about two leadership activities is going to be adequate for your application. Obviously, take into account what the quality of that leadership activity was. If you were a leader, say, for planning one event, that's not gonna be as dynamic as if you were maybe uh, participant in your research and then you let a team of undergrads eventually into their own project and developing something else. That's going to be much more dynamic. But whatever it is, focus on trying to find something 
in an activity that you're already doing that you could take upon that leadership role. So develop into a leader. Maybe you could become a volunteer coordinator, or maybe you could become a shift coordinator in hospital volunteering. Whatever it is, there's those opportunities out there, and medical schools want to see that you have the ability to lead as a future physician. So these are the five most common extracurricular activities and the ones that are going to make you most competitive as a medical school applicant. A few other notes, when you're looking to find these activities, focus on something that you're passionate about. Don't just do something to check off a box on your application. When you write your application and you interview, if you're just doing it to check off a box, they're going to know. Admissions committees are going to be able to see that. But if you do something that you're passionate about and you're interested, then that will come off that way. It will show your, in your dedication, your commitment to it. Another thing is try to make these experiences longitudinal. I see a lot of people with maybe 400 hours of community service, but maybe they did something here or they did something here. The best activities are ones that you really dedicated yourself to and continued on, and you can show growth and progression through the activity. So early on in your career, hopefully, think about some activities you want to get involved in, ones you're passionate about and interested in, start them and continue with them.